Hi, I'm John, the MedPod engineer, Termel, and this is the decision of Ontario Superior Court Justice Lalonde in the case of uh, R versus James Turner. He was charged with uh, cultivation of marijuana, and he filed his application to prohibit the charges on the grounds that the Parker and Krieger decisions invalidated the possession and cultivation sections of the criminal code. And uh, this judge threw the case out, um, dismissed it as frivolous and vexatious. When you consider it's the same arguments that have been studied by Justice Tullock for the last four months, who's given it a lot more thought, you realize this judge did treat it as frivolous and vexatious and didn't give it much thought. R versus Turner, 2008, Can Lee, 63192, Ontario Supreme Court. Between Her Majesty the Queen respondent and James Turner applicant, with Elizabeth O'Grady for the Crown, James Turner self-represented, heard November 26, 2008, in Ottawa. Reasons for decision. Lalonde Justice. Nature of proceeding. 1. James Turner applies for the following relief. 1. An order prohibiting prosecution of all charges related to marijuana under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, the CDSA, as unknown to law. On the grounds, Parliament has not reenacted the Section 7 Cultivation and Section 4 Possession Prohibitions, which underpin all other marijuana prohibitions in the CDSA, since they were struck down by the Ontario Court of and Alberta Courts of Appeal. 2. An order staying any charges for marijuana as abuse of the court process on the grounds all statutes related to marijuana are of no force and effect. 3. An order citing the Minister of Justice for contempt of this court because he allows this prosecution to take place. Four, an order allowing the applicant to turn on a portable tape recorder pursuant to section 136 of the Ontario Courts of Justice Act, which states that, quote, nothing prohibits a party acting in person from unobtrusively making an audio recording of the court hearing for the sole purpose of supplementing or replacing handwritten notes in the manner that's been approved by the judge or for any other manner of audio taping deemed preferable by the court which means they can't say no, they can only say no to a certain way of doing it. Two, the Crown moves for a summary dismissal of Mr. Turner's application pursuant to Rule 611.2 of the Criminal Proceedings Rules that read as follows, application by respondent, Two, upon application by the respondent that a notice of application does not show a substantial ground for the order sought, a judge of the court may, if he or she considers that the matter is frivolous or vexatious and can be determined without a full hearing, dismiss the application summarily and cause the applicant to be advised accordingly. Now remember, all these arguments were raised before Justice Tullock in February of this year, and four months later, he's still on a reserve decision thinking about what this crown is calling frivolous and vexatious. History of Mr. Turner's case. On September 28, 2006, James Turner was charged with production of marijuana, namely 2,879 plants, contrary to Section 7.1 of the CDSA. Possession of marijuana for the purposes of trafficking, contrary to Section 5.2 of the CDSA, and with possession of proceeds of the crime of property obtained by crime, contrary to Section 3.5.4.1a of the Criminal Code. 4. James Turner has elected to be tried before the Superior Court of Justice. Five. Now notice, remember, when I got busted with more than three keys, they didn't give me an option to pick who I was going to be tried by. They just railroaded me. Uh, on June 4th, 2007, James Turner scheduled a preliminary hearing before the Ontario Court of Justice for November 22nd, 2007 at 10 a.m. On November 14th, 2007, James Turner served the Public Prosecution Service of Canada, National Capital Region, with an application to be heard in Ottawa on November 19th, 2007, 10 a.m. On November 19th, Mr. Turner did not appear at the application hearing, and the application was dismissed by the Honorable Justice McWilliam without prejudice to Mr. Turner's option to refer file the application at a future date. On November 22, 2007, Mr. Turner appeared for a scheduled preliminary hearing. However, the hearing was adjourned for Mr. Turner to address a medical condition obtained counsel. 9. Following the preliminary hearing date, counsel, Mr. Zachary Horrocks, appeared on Mr. Turner's behalf for seven court appearances, as well as a judicial pretrial with the Honorable Justice Ann Alder of the Ontario Court of Justice. 
10. At the most recent court appearances on May 28, 2008, Mr. Horrocks indicated that Mr. Turmel is presently a self-represented accused person, and as a result, a judicial pretrial was scheduled Mr. Turmel had uh, Turner to be held on June 23, 2008, with the Honorable Justice Ann Alder of the Interior Court of Justice. That same day, Mr. Turner served the Public Prosecution Service of Canada with the above application, the Krieger application. Crown's position, 12. I reproduce the Crown's position, position in its entirety. This is the Judge uh, Lalonde who says this. He's going to read off the Crown's arguments because he's going to accept them. Elizabeth O'Grady argues that, A, as a preliminary hearing has yet to occur, committed to trial is still at issue, and committal to trial is still at issue, and this court should decline jurisdiction to adjudicate the application until such time as a trial judge has been assigned. Mr. Turner does not have the requisite standing to request the remedies sought. In particular, Mr. Turner does not have public interest standing to obtain an order for prohibition of all, the prosecution of all marijuana-related offenses in Canada, or a remedy on behalf of all persons charged with marijuana-related offenses in Canada. In the absence of the requisite public interest standing, Mr. Turner may only seek remedies as they apply to his specific legal proceedings. C. Mr. Turner requests for an order staying his specific charges as an abuse of the process on the grounds that all statutes governing marijuana are of no force and effect is an allegation that his rights as protected by section 7 of the canadian charter of rights and freedoms have been infringed this issue has been disposed of by the court of appeal for ontario in a number of cases and most recently reiterated in r versus termel 2007 ontario justice number 724 Mr. Turner has no standing to seek an order citing the Minister of Justice in contempt of a court order, and Mr. Turner has not complied with the requirements concerning applications as set out in the Courts of Justice Act or Criminal Proceedings Rules. Wanna bet? F. An official transcript of court proceedings may be made available to Mr. Turner should he wish to supplement or replace his handwritten notes. A further recording of the proceeding for any other purpose is contrary to Section 136 of the Courts of Justice Act. So even though Section 136 says you have the right to unobtrusively tape record for your own notes, she says he doesn't have that right because he has the right to get a transcript. Well, they've always had a right to get a transcript, so therefore, how can Section 136 not be valid because they've always had a right to get a transcript when it says that while they've always had a right to get a transcript, they can use a tape recorder to supplement their own personal notes? Of course, remember, we've always met crowns who argue the contradictions of what they mean. So anyway, Mr. Turner's position, 13. Mr. Turner pleads that the charges against him are an abuse of the court process on the grounds that all statutes related to marijuana are of no force and effect and that the Crown knows it. That is why he is requesting the Minister of Justice be found to be in contempt of this court. 14. The grounds Mr. Turner relies on are that Section 7.1 and Section 4.1 prohibitions have never been legislated by Parliament after being struck by the decisions in R v. Parker, 2000, and R v. Krieger, 2000. 15. Mr. Turner was content to file the materials used by John Turmel in his Superior Court appearance before Justice Catherine Aitken of that court on May 26, 2003. Well, actually, I filed a prohibition years later, which also raised the Krieger invalidation. And, of course, Mr. Turner is now raising both, not just the original application before Justice Aitken, but the one I had before Justice McLeod, too. I guess they forgot. Mr. Turmel had argued, as does Mr. Turner, that the decision R versus Parker meant that the marijuana prohibition in Section 4 of the CDSA was invalid and that the declaration had been suspended for 12 months. Since the 12 months have elapsed, and, as Mr. Turner pleads, the Chrétien Liberal government refused to pass legislation deleting marijuana from Schedule 2 of the CDSA, then marijuana has been removed from Schedule 2 for all purposes. Yes, I argued that. If they did not actually correct Section 4 that said it's illegal to possess anything on, schedule, on the illegal schedule, well, if they didn't change that to say except marijuana, well, how do you affect except marijuana unless you knock marijuana off the schedule of banned substances? 
But the Court of Appeal said, no, nah, we don't need to reprint the legislation. We judges will remember which laws are there and which laws are not, even if they are there. No kidding. Section 5.2, like Section 4 of the CDSA, relied on the listing of marijuana in Schedule 2 to create the charge of possession of marijuana for the purposes of trafficking. As a result, Mr. Turner claims that no such charge existed on September 28, 2006, when he was charged, and that the Crown should be prohibited from proceedings with the charges against him. Analysis. At the opening of her argument, Crown Counsel filed the affidavit of Ellen J. Creighton, an articling student with the Public Prosecution Service of Canada, to establish that Mr. Turner used substantially the same materials previously filed by John Turmel in his application for prohibition and his record of application to quash in R. v. Turmel, court file number 0320630. Yeah, he's going to use the same aces I did. Maybe he'll find a judge bright enough to let him win the pot. 